Well, well, well. PS5 Pro specifications, overall power, and expected release date has surfaced on the internet. And if true, then Sony are going to really change the home console power paradigm and may well force Microsoft to change its stance on a possible Xbox Series Pro at some point this generation. That is, if it isn't already secretly priming the next iteration of its most powerful console on the market today, the Xbox Series X. But the question remains, do we really need mid-generation console updates and what uniquely can they offer? All that and more right after this. Welcome back to another Foxy Games UK news video. If you like the work I do here, go ahead, like, subscribe, hit notification, follow Foxy Games UK via X, formerly Twitter, at Foxy Games underscore UK for more informative gaming news, rumor, opinion, and gameplay. As usual, all applicable links are available in this video's description. So, today is the day for a whole bunch of rumor and speculation. Disclaimer, none of this information is my own, nor from any sources that I am linked to. This PS5 Pro rumor is not mine, okay? Good, you'd be surprised how many people attach stuff to you. Even when you say it's a rumor, you actually reference the where the rumor came from. They seem to tie it back to you for some reason. Yeah, attention spans these days. So, Sony has apparently caught wind that it's unannounced PS5 Pro spec was due to be leaked this month, mainly due to the distribution of development kits to third-party studios and partners. That is according to Tom Henderson, who already leaked the now-confirmed PS5 quote-unquote slim with detachable Blu-ray drive. So there is at least some substance here. So these are the rumored PS5 Pro specs. And some of them are unbelievable. So for a start, codenamed Project Trinity. It's a supposedly a 4K ray tracing beast with 23.04 T-flops. Faster, even faster loading times if uh, it isn't fast enough with the standard PS5. A new custom APU. There's a TSMC 54 nanometer process, eight cores based on the Zen 4 technology integrated GPU 30, 30 watts. Yes, incredible. And 60 compute units. It's an iGPU, that's RDNA 3 or RDNA 3.5 custom. APU may feature 96 ROPS, 50% more base, um, more than the base PS5 that is, with higher CPU clocks at around 3.6 gigahertz, higher GPU clocks at 2.7 gigahertz, 16 gigabyte GDDR6 memory, built-in NVMe SSD enhancements, of course, you'd expect that. 1800 MTS memory, that's quite fast for a console. Consistent 4K 60 FPS, new performance mode for 8K, or maybe new quality mode for 8K. I can't see performance 60 FPS and 8K, can you? Accelerated ray tracing, well, that would be a given, really, wouldn't it? It has to be better than the uh, vanilla model's ray tracing capability and well advanced in development which has been in development since early 2022 there are demos already knocking about studios received dev kits back in november of 2023 not that long ago and it's aiming for a november 2024 launch the last major hardware before sony drops playstation 6 which is targeting a 2028 launch very interesting stuff. Now, I'm going to comment on some of it because it's unbelievable and I simply don't buy it. So, the detailed side of the specs are the Viola is fabbed on the TSMC N4P. If you're technically minded, you can go do some research or whatever. I don't know what the hell it means, but it certainly sounds better than what we have now. Viola CPU is maintaining the Zen 2 architecture found in the existing PS5 for compatibility reasons, but the frequency will once again be dynamic with a peak of 4.4 GHz, 64 kilobytes of L1 cache per core, 512 kilobytes of L2 cache per core, and 8 megabyte of L3 shared. That's 4 megabyte per CCX. That's uh, 56 CUs enabled for the silicon in retail. PS5 Pro units. I'm pretending I know anything about this, which I don't. So those who know about this stuff, obviously this is going to be of use to you. For everyone else 
Just think of it as a major, increased, powerful PS5. So Trinity is the culmination of three key technologies. Fast storage, that's hardware, accelerated compression and decompression, already an existing key PS5 technology, and accelerated ray tracing and upscaling. The architecture is RDNA3, but it's taking ray tracing improvements from RDNA4, typical Sony customizing, borrowing from different uh, generations and different technology SKUs. Now the BVH traversal will be handled by a dedicated ray tracing hardware rather than fully relying on shaders. It will also ins include a thread reordering to reduce data and execution divergence, which will speed things up massively. Something akin to the Ada, Lovelace, SCR and Intel's Arx TSU. Now the 3,584 shaders will go some way to improving those graphics, no doubt. 224 TMUs and 96 ROPs, incredibly powerful. Now, 16 gigabyte of 18 GB PSG DDR memory, that's 256 bit memory bus with 576 gigabytes seek time memory bandwidth. Wow. Now, the GPU frequency target is 2 gigahertz. This lands the dual issue T flops in a range of around 28.67 T flops peak. Two core clocks. 14.33 T-flops if you ignore the dual issue factor. 50 to 60% rasterization uplift over Oberon and Oberon Plus over twice the raw ray tracing performance. The XDNA2 NPU will be featured for the purpose of accelerating Sony's bespoke temporal machine learning upscaling techniques. This will be one of the core focuses of the PS5 Pro like we saw with the checkerboard rendering for PS4 Pro, or temporally stable upscaled 4K output at higher than 30 FPS is the goal. Now this will have a rumored September 2024 reveal. Again, the source is Tom Henderson, but by way of reset era. Also credit to Rhino as all of the aforementioned information was compiled by Rhino the Bouncer at X, formerly Twitter, go check out his stuff. He's always putting things up there. I follow him. Now, that is PS5 Pro in a nutshell, according to these rumors. Now, there's a lot of gobbledygook and tech speak that even I don't understand, and I'm not going to pretend to. So, go research if you have to research. Now, what is feasible about all of this spec and what is not? Well, right off the bat, that 20 T flop seems a little overkill for a mid gen refresh. And that would certainly mean PlayStation 6 will have to launch with double that. So I don't think 20 plus T-flop compute power is realistic here. I mean, can you see Sony launching PlayStation 6 in 2028 slash 29 with 40 T-flops compute power? I think not. I mean, unless there is some kind of radical revolution in the silicon space, i.e. price versus performance is drastically reduced in a pretty significant way i would advise not to expect this type of power in ps5 pro or playstation 6 but it's interesting stuff all the same make what you will of it you know are you interested in a ps5 pro are you happy with the current model is it worth jumping to the mid-gen refresh knowing that playstation are planning and targeting 2028 for its playstation 6. i for one purchased the ps4 pro and to be honest with you, in hindsight, it wasn't really worth the purchase, in my opinion, because they barely did anything with that extra power, but include higher graphics, higher resolution, mostly checkerboard, and, uh, you know, marginally improved frame rates, as, you know, Digital Foundry has uh, shown over the years. So is buying a mid-gen refresh even worth it? It's not going to have any exclusive games that's going to take fuller you know advantage of the power it's kind of like buying a new graphics card for a pc yeah they're going to turn up the dial as far as the graphics card will manage but you don't want to get specific games made for that power level and it's the same thing with the consoles i mean they would split the user base for one so you don't expect any exclusives for the extra power for any pro models it just won't happen same thing with the xbox one x just tarted up visuals marginally improved frame rates slightly faster loading 
So, what say you? Let's continue the discussion cordially in the comments as that brings us to the end of the video. Just like, subscribe, hit notification, and comment regularly on these videos. You can help Foxy Games UK reach more gamers, so feel free to share the video. You may also want to consider supporting Foxy Games UK via Patreon because, well, we're like family now. Link in the description. But that concludes our time together on this Monday. Until next time, always consumers first and play games, not corporations. <laughs>